everyone, myself Purushottam, working as assistant professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering, MLRIT. In this session, I am going to explain about thread creation by implementing the runnable interface now. So, this is the overview of this session. The first, I am going to explain the creating a thread by implementing the runnable interface and the same concept I am going to explain with a sample example program. Okay. So, let us get started today's session now. So, this is the second way of creating a thread. Okay. So, how to create a thread means the first way I already explained the previous session. So, by extending a thread class, we can create a thread and also by implementing runnable interface also, we can create a thread. Okay. So, so how to create a thread by using runnable interface? Now, we will see. So, here we have some points regarding what this uh, thread creation. In a thread can be created by extending a thread class also. In previous session, I already explained. But Java allows only one class to extend at a time. Okay. So, multiple inheritance concept is not applicable. So, suppose if you take an example, I have a class, class, suppose assume, let us take an example, A and extends, you need to use what a thread. Now, if you observe here, you already used what the extends keyword and here only one class is allowed. If I want to use one more class, let us take an example, I want to take a class that is a P or I want to take one more class like I want to take B or I want to take any other class. So, it is not possible. Why means here if you are using extends keyword, only one class we need to extends at a time. Okay. So, this is a problem with what the previous approach. Here, we can use a runnable interface. The runnable interface means you can use what implements keyword. After implements keyword, you can also extends or you can also implement any number of interfaces just separating with the comma. So, that is the main advantage of using this approach. Nothing is there here. Now, so it is always to better to create a thread by implementing the runnable interface. Okay. So, why means I will explain the programmatically this point. So, by implementing runnable interface, you need to provide the implementation of the run method. Okay. So, these points now I am going to explain. Now, you can see guys, first approach and second approach almost the same, but the little changes are there. Now, I am going to explain that now again. So, I will take my own class, my own class here. I am taking thread. Now, here we need to use what implement. Instead of extends keyword, we need to use implements. Now, the runnable. Okay. Now, the runnable interface. Now, the runnable is an interface. So, compulsory, we need to what override the run method here. So, here I am overriding the run method. The runnable is having one unimplemented method that is a run method. Okay. Runnable is a interface. Interface contains unimplemented method. Now, what is the unimplemented method of a runnable means run method only. Okay. Now, the run method is overridden. Now, the same story inside a run method, what we need to do means we need to define the thread job. So, I am defining the thread job here i is less than 10 the same job i am defining here just like in the previous session so here i will print hello just i will print a hello now thread is ready now i want to create object to the thread class why means this job i want to call okay so to call this what this job we need to create object to the what the my thread i created what object to the my thread new my thread now, I want to call the start method. Now, here, so when a new thread will be create and how to start a thread means compulsory we need to call the start method. But if you call the start method in this approach, so directly the start method is not available. Okay, you can see here, if you run this program, you can see here cannot find a symbol, the start method. There is no start method in my thread. You can see here there is no start method in my thread and a runnable also there is no start method. Actually, this start method is a part of the thread class. Okay. So, directly we cannot access. So, compulsory we need to, we need to create object to the thread class. I created object to the thread class like I create what my thread new. Now, whatever your thread is there that we need to hand over toward the thread class. So, here I am passing what? as an argument to the thread class. Now, the thread class is uh, having what the start method. So, I will access the start method from thread class. Now, my thread dot start method. 
now this is the way to execution of what runnable interface okay so you can see here it will execute the same now what is the advantage of using here means if you want if you have other interfaces like suppose assume here i have one more interface assume so here interface like suppose if you take an example a now this a is having one method so let's take an example m1 method so public void m1 method now this interface feature this m1 i want to override in my thread okay now what you can do means here just implements runnable comma e now you can access the both features the runnable features you can access and a features you can access so here what we need to do means you need to override the what m1 method now you can see here so this is the advantage of using what this approach but if you in previous approach if you want to use this implements keyboard or if you are if you want to access this any of this class or interface so it is not possible okay so this is the problem with the previous approach now if you observe this runnable interface and thread class okay so in previous approach so directly we have we are created what our own class and we are using the what thread class we are extending a thread class and we are using runnable is having the run method the run method is overridden inside a thread class and from the thread class we are accessing what the run method and if you are using the second approach you need to create your own class and you need to access the run method and that run method you need to override your own class but in first approach in thread class you have what the start method okay so directly we are accessing but in second approach we don't have you can see here we don't have any thread here means there is no start method there is no start method call this start method we are going to take support from the thread class so in between we are creating object to the thread class and we are accessing what the start method so if you are not calling the start method no new thread will be created okay so the only way to start the only way to create a thread means compulsory we need to call what the start method otherwise it won't work now so the same points i explain so to run the implementation of the class so you need to create the object and pass runnable interface implementation to the object constructor so i created object to the my own class and whatever you are created and that we need to hand over to what a thread class why means we need to call the start method we need to call the start method if you are not calling the start method no new thread will be created so compulsory we need to pass your what uh, reference to the thread class and if you call the start method so automatically your thread will be execute so this is the same example here i created my own class and implemented what the runnable interface and i overridden i overridden what the run method now the run method is a part of what the unimplemented method of the runnable interface so that method i overridden here and here i want to call this a thread job so to call this a thread job so first step is what you need to create object to the class and how to start a thread means so compulsory we need to call the start method so but a start method is a part of the thread class so that's why i created object to the thread class and i hand over my object to what a thread uh, class and the thread class will be automatically it will start the execution the first approach and second approach almost the same the only way is what here we are taking the thread class support so compulsory we need to create object to the thread class okay so otherwise the start method we cannot call and the program won't be execute and no new thread will be created so coming to the summary of this session in this session i have explained so creating a thread by implementing the runnable interface and some sample program i explained okay so that's about this session thank you